Hey Cynthia. Hi Sandra. How are you doing? I'm okay. And you? I'm good. So how was your journey all the way from Limbe to here? Smooth. Mm. No problems, no car breakdowns. That's a nice journey. Okay. So we are very, very happy having you here for this program. Knowing you came all the way from, from Limbe just for the program. I am honored. Okay. So before starting, you first tell our viewers and listeners who you are and what you do. Okay. So my name is Acha Cynthia and I'm an electrical engineer by profession and I'm the founder of Solar City Limbe. So what background did you have before becoming an electrical engineer? Oh, well, I did sciences in secondary school. So um, mathematics, further mathematics, mm -hmm. chemistry, biology, physics. And then because I was not too sure which engineering background to go with, um, I decided to go into applied physics mm -hmm. for my bachelor's degree. It was supposed to help me um, choose, go like touch all the different engineering backgrounds mm -hmm. and then help me to know better which one to specify in for my master's degree. Mm -hmm. So then after doing the three years program in applied physics and computer sciences, I then moved in to do electrical engineering and industrial computing for my master's degree. Mm -hmm. So becoming an engineer was your aim, that was your passion, it's always been that. Yes. I was not too sure which one, I just wanted to be an engineer. Uh, why, why engineer, just the name? Uh, honestly, maybe in my head, it carried a lot of charisma when mm. I was younger. And um, I, I just wanted that attached to the beginning of my name when maybe when I die or when people are calling my name in the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that. And today, do you feel like accomplished? Yes, uh, I always have more goals, mm -hmm. but when it concerns my childhood goals, yes, I do feel very fulfilled and gratefully though. Mm -hmm. So what does the job of an electrical engineer actually involve? Well, an electrical engineer's job is actually very vast very vast mm -hmm. um, electrical energy is, is like the mother of all the different types so mm -hmm. there's like it's like solar energy which is still under electrical engineering electrical engineering mm -hmm. there's still um this hydro mm -hmm. so there's just like all these other energy fields mm -hmm. electrical engineering is like the mother of all of them so it's, it's really difficult to say what an electrical engineer does because it just depends on which area you're specialized in. Like how we know, like here in our own Energy of Cameroon company, um, they make their own electricity using um, hydro energy, water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so but they are more specified in transmitting, producing, and then transporting energy mm -hmm. and distributing it to different people. So it's more like um, network mm -hmm. energy and network. So that's mm -hmm. a whole lot. It's a whole lot different. Mm -hmm. So solar energy is producing energy, electricity too, but from the from the sun. So it really just depends on which sector of electricity you're working on. So are you, uh, on which sector do you work and how does it go? Oh, I'm working on the solar energy sector. Mm -hmm. It's going really well. Um, a couple of years ago, it was all I, I mean, like, what does do. it involve, that sector? Like you said, uh, okay. I yeah. Oh yeah, it involves, well, designing people's systems. So for example, if somebody has has need for maybe continuous energy. Yeah. Um, maybe they also need to store some of the energy and they use it at a later time. Um, so solar energy really does that for you. Um, so we're able to come up with designing your system based on your property. Mm -hmm. So it could be business, it could be small business, it could be a home, no matter the size of the home. It could even be like a company and all of that. So um, we actually take our time to design, understand your needs, the capacity of your property and then give you a solution. So some people, their aim could be to reduce the electricity bills. Mm -hmm. Other people's aim could just be continuous energy. They never want to be in blackouts, never mm -hmm. ever. Um, so they don't mind the costing. So it really just depends. So we make sure that we really understand where you're falling, what your need is, and then give you a solution that just best fits you. Mm -hmm. So what are the key steps of um, in designing an electrical system? for example like i think uh, electrical engineering is about planning yeah uh, designing analyzing when it comes to designing 
what are the key steps? Well, in my sector, just like in any other sector, mm -hmm. uh, you need to take the time to go and look at the situation. So for us, we go to the client's property. We take the time to look at them. We take data, like the GPS location at that time, yeah. the, at this location where it is, the exact location. We also get like the weather um, data from reliable sources. Um, we also get all of that. And then we go back home with all that data, including how much capacity um, the client has. So we look at like, okay, does the client have like ACs? Do they have like how many fans, how many TVs, lighting, and all of that. Just everything that they need um, to, they, they need the solar energy to run. Mm -hmm. We take that data. We use also like, we use appliances like the power meter. Mm -hmm. So we don't just rely on the ratings that's written on the appliances. Most of the times it could be higher, most of the times it could be lower. And then you can end up oversizing or undersizing the client and then hence play with the cost. It also affect the costing could be slightly more than more than they could have paid for. And then it can end up being slightly um, lesser than you could actually provide for them. Mm -hmm. So side visits is like the first main thing that we do. So we take our time actually get all that data because that's really crucial and then we go back to the office and then we start designing with our softwares and then when everything is done we then send the client a proposal mm -hmm. so we usually do like two or three options mm -hmm. um so depending on the client okay but just know that whatever option you start with you can always grow in the future so if you start with like a, lot, a small system now you can always expand in the future so that's part of the side visit also because we take the time to discuss with the client okay whatever you're asking for now is that all you need in the future or whatever we're seeing in this building, is that all that's going to be in the next two years, the next three years? So we take all that into consideration when we're signing, when we're doing your designing. And that's when it comes to designing. So now if you talk about the analyzing part, if you're asked like to study the solar, the electrical system of a hospital, how would you go about it? Okay, so we know that hospitals are like, um, they never, they never just shut down, so yeah. they're on 24-7. Yeah. So when you're trying to do a design for a hospital, you need to consider that um, they're always going to have, they're always going to need energy, like all the time. Yeah. So the hospital's main um, aim, main goal, is so that it should never be blackout. You cannot be doing an operation and then light goes out. You cannot be, a patient cannot be in the hospital and then light goes out, it's really weird, it's bad. So when you're doing the designing and analyzing a hospital, so that's one of the first things you consider. So they can never be in a blackout. Mm. And so, you know, okay, do they already have grid energy? Grid is like, you know, do they already have grid energy in the hospital? So if they already have, um, how often does their grid energy go out? So on an average, do they, do they lose energy like light for like two hours, three hours, four hours? So you know that, okay, either you're giving them solar energy system that will give them autonomy for like eight hours, seven hours, six hours, depending on how much to close the gap. Or you can like, okay, maybe if the hospital is okay, it's well enough to do, they make sure that they have both solar energy full time yeah. and just grid to full time, mm -hmm. just whatever one is available, um, they work with it. So those are one of the things I really consider when we're doing the analysis to design um, a place like the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then we also take the time out to make sure that they have the enough roof space. Because the hospital generally needs like, they actually have like machines, and they have a lot of lighting, um, and all these appliances require a lot of energy more than a normal home will. So we need to make sure, okay, all the panels you want to give them, do they have um, this space on the roof? Mm -hmm. If they don't have it on the roof, do they have like a land around so the panels can, can grab enough energy that they need? Um, they also have enough space to put the indoor system, the indoor systems like the battery banks, um, the inverters and all that. Do they have space to do that? A safe space away from people moving in and out. Um, away from children going around to touch mm -hmm. things like that, have that, have that. So the kind of things are really analyzed when we when we want to do things for the hospital. Mm, and I think, for your opinion, it's better for a hospital which uses hydraulic electric system to have even uh, to have solar system as a back back. Uh, how do you call back it? Backup. Backup as a backup system. Yes. For not to go out of uh, electrical energy. Yes, mm -hmm. of course, a hundred percent. It's really bad. We've heard we've had situations in this country where people are in the middle of surgery yeah. and then the lights go out and then there's no power. It has happened people in the middle of delivery. So that's happened a lot. So 
Um, for a home, you can even consider, okay, they can start with a small system, battery bank for now, and then grow in the future. But a hospital is not like that. It's supposed to be like a one-time thing. Yeah. Make sure that whatever you're giving them is really, really what they're going to be using for like the next five years, 10 years, and things like that. Yeah. When we hear you speaking, it's like you've got a lot of experience. Although you're very young, you really <laughs> master what you're talking about. So I guess you can tell us what are the qualities of a good electrical engineer? Oh, yes. Um, with my experience and all of that, and all that I've learned and all of that I've gathered, um, a good electrical engineer should, first of all, really like your job. Um, electrical engineering could really be daunting, the task could be difficult sometimes, but mm. if you don't like it, it's difficult for you to carry on. Um, sometimes things can really go south. Um, you can do your systems, your design, and then the appliances or electronics just mm -hmm. mess up. Yeah. Um, you should really like fixing things. You should really like arranging things you should really like finding what's the next best thing to do this is a situation that's not gone out the way i've planned um, how can i do it how can i fix it mm -hmm. and secondly an electrical engineer should really like um, good work so whatever system you're designing whatever cabling you're doing you should really like like um you should really like looking at it and it looks good mm -hmm. it's easy for another technician to just look at it and understand the trend yeah. of your cabling and how the current is supposed to go through. Yeah. Um, a good electrical engineer should also really like calculations. Because honestly, if you're not, if you don't like calculations, you, you really cannot be an engineer at all. Um, you surely just be like a technician. People that just do things because they're used to doing things, they're accustomed to do things like that. Mm -hmm. But electrical engineering, if you like calculations, you always look for the better solution. Whatever solution you're doing now, in like in the next five years, you should be able to do it better. Um, so those are really, really important things. So even as you're growing up, um, you should like physics and math. Yeah. And those are the criteria that you know that, okay, if your child likes physics and math, okay, it's most likely that you'll be good at engineering because that's like the core foundation of yeah. all of that. Because just like in solar systems, no two systems are the same. Mm -hmm. No two clients' needs are the same. So there's always, always differences. So you always, always need to calculate. So if you're ever tired of doing calculations, or you feel lazy about doing you're going to run into a lot of problems and you're not going to make a very good engineer. So having a background in mathematics like you is recommended? Yes, highly, highly recommended. Yeah. So um, uh, what are the difficulties you face working as an electrical engineer? Uh, well, I, I think that for, for us in this country, there is a lack of sensitization. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult you actually spend a lot of time trying to explain to the client the solution that you're providing to them. Mm -hmm. um, that takes a lot of time and energy and effort. So if you really don't like what you're doing, if you really don't enjoy um, helping people, helping them understand the solution that you're bringing to them, it's going to be very difficult. Um, apart from that, we also have finance challenges because most of the times you would like to provide a solution to a client but, and even, even when you try to make it as affordable as possible, it's still very difficult for them and you just feel terrible. Yeah. So the, we also have that problem here. Um, we also have the problem when you're working with, with teams, with teams, uh, there's also lack of um, skills mm -hmm. with most people in solar energy to be specific. Um, so it's really difficult for you to just hand uh, a stack to somebody and confidently believe that they'll do it. Mm -hmm. So you always have to be checking each member of your of your team, making sure that they're doing things as expected mm -hmm. because it's lack of skill and you're still growing in your team, you're growing your team, you're growing their knowledge and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, because solar energy is quite new in this country. So uh, very few people have taken the time to really, really study and want to know and want to grow and provide accurate and proper uh, solutions. So just they're not taking the time, so there's, there's that problem. So since last year you own your own company, you offer services related to solar system energy. Yeah. And you're only 25. You did that last year at that age. And it's very, I think it's very scarce to see people of your age opening something, a company that does something that serious. So we are curious to know, like, how did you get there at that age? Well, I'm turning 25 next month. Let's start oh, there. <laughs> so you did you did that at twenty four? Yes. Yeah. Um, That's um, even better. <laughs> well, honestly, um, 
it's really been tough years, honestly. It's yeah. really not been a piece of cake. Um, people who are close to me would know that it's really been a struggling year for years for me. I've, I've really wanted huge things. I've really wanted to do things that will um, impact people yeah. around me. And it's, it's never been one of the easiest tasks. And so I faced a lot of difficulties and challenges, but I've had very huge support systems too. Um, my family and friends. Mm. So, um, so last year, last year, what actually caused me to start it was when, when I was graduating my master's degree, the, the last year, yeah. we had to come up with like a thesis. Mm. And then my, my original thesis had nothing to do with solar energy. It was actually trying to find faults on electrical lines. Mm. So like, okay, how better to find faults? Because normally when, when an electrical line, a fault, there's a fault on an electrical line, the technicians took like forever to find the fault, which spot, and before they even start tracing what kind of fault it is. So I was working on that to come up with a solution and then defend that for my, for my master's degree. So I then I applied for an um, internship at the Energy of Cameroon, and because of the corona period, uh, the corona crisis at the time, um, they weren't recruiting anybody. They were actually even letting people off. So um, my mom actually introduced me to um, a man who came to provide us with a small backup system in our home. And I was like, okay. She was like, you can work with him while waiting. And I was working with him, still working with him. He, we, were, we went around Limbe installing um, solar solutions to people. And then that's when it hit me. Okay, he was he was mostly installing systems where the clients will have to manually switch between a new or solar energy, like manually. And obviously, because it's manually, it's mechanical. It's, it's easy to spark a fire. Yeah. And all that means it's, it's also not very good for homes with small children. And then so I was like, okay. So I started I started working on uh, my thesis. Student. I changed it. I was like, okay, I'm going to start working on an automatic system where it can switch between either of the two sources and also inform the user that, okay, wherever you are, like on your phone, SMS text, and mm. tell you, okay, you're now on solar energy, um, you've consumed this amount of energy. And that's the digital part of your service. Yes, mm. you've, uh, you've consumed um, this amount of energy so far, and you're and you now, and things like that, and just to give you, help you keep track mm. of things like that, so yeah. So I think when I, working on that project, it was, it was, I've never worked on a project that intense in three months, Really to sleep. Um, I remember my room. I was living with my sister at the time. The room was cables everywhere, building things and testing, um, programming with um, C++. It was, it was crazy. But then, thankfully, to my background in computer science, um, I was able to program the system. So I was working um, and simulating the prototype and then building it physically. It took some time, but we finally came up with it. So after that, I was like, okay. So I realized solar energy is really something I want to, mm. I want to get into. And then I, I got the job after, after I graduated, like a few months later, like two or three months later, I got a job in a company who was dealing with solar energy too, in a way. And um, working with them for three months, it wasn't going the way I expected. I didn't yeah. like it. I didn't like the way the company was doing, the policies and all of that. And so I applied for another job somewhere else. At which moment did you really realize that you had to open your own company? Yes, when, when I actually applied for this other job later, uh, the, it didn't go well. So I applied for the job, went for the interview sessions. They were looking for engineers to work on some cancer machines. And after going through the whole process and getting the job, they now call me later and tell me that the board thinks it's risky to invest in a female. So okay, wow. You so first gender weird. discrimination. Yeah, so that was weird. So. Um, I got this idea. My former my former colleague at the time, mm. he told me, "Okay, why don't you start your own company in in Limba?" And then so I was like, "Yeah." I mean, there was none in Limba at the time. I was like, "So why not?" So that's actually what pushed me to to start. Where I, I also thought of I I actually have a lot of friends who did electrical engineering just like me, and they weren't having they weren't really having jobs and things like that. So and they're very smart, very smart girls. So I was like, "Okay." So I know that there are many girls like me out there. So if they could start something and then tomorrow have those girls come in and other smarter girls, obviously, mm. um, it would be great. I would, that yeah. would be very fulfilling for me. So, so yeah. So I guess your services are like presented in segments. Can you present yeah. it to our viewers? Yeah. 
So Solicity, Solicity does in sales of solar related equipment. So you have like, you can sell things separately, you can sell all the parts separately, you can sell your panels separately, batteries separately, um, your inverters separately. We also do now in installing. So we can do your whole design system, go to your house, install it for you, have it work. Um, we can do that too. And then we, lastly, we can also maintain the system. So it could be a system that we installed, it could be another one that we didn't install. Maybe you had some other technician do it for you and it's breaking down, we can come in, save the day, we can do that for you too. And um, so basically those are the three main uh, segments that we work on. Yeah, I think you're the only company offering that kind of service. Solar system services in in, in, Zimbe, in the yes. whole southwest. So yeah. does your target understand the services you offer? Well, yes, they do. I mean, they do now. Yeah. <laughs> at the beginning, no, they did not. Um, at the beginning, I, I think we spent like six months sensitizing people. Six months. So people, would, every time they would see the signboard, they would come in and they were like, okay, we've heard about solar energy, but what does it really do? How can it really help me? And things like that. So many people may have heard about it. They don't know, okay, yes, it's a good solution from the greed failure, mm -hmm. but they really don't know how to go about it. So we spend a lot of months sensitizing, happily, but daunting. Yeah. So if you have to convince um, an individual or company to switch from hydraulic electrical system to solar, solar system, uh electricity yeah electricity so how how will you go about is it easy has it been easy for you to convince them since you started yeah yeah so far when yes. they get when they get the importance of having yes. that yeah. yes so how do you go about convincing them okay so first of all first of all um there is there's been um everybody most people yeah. know that okay so then it's good it's stable um it's a good backup system from grid energy, but they really don't really understand. Um, so because with solar energy, um, the cost, the initial cost thing can be, can be difficult. It can be, can be huge for some people. And this is relative, by the way. And so for every sphere of um, people on the, on the ladder, there's like, it's still difficult. So um, even though they know that it's good, they don't just know how good it is. So you have to take your time to show them, especially in numbers. So if you invest this much in this amount of time, you've recovered your money. And then after this amount of time, you're not using energy free. You've recovered your money and then you're not using energy free. Um, it's, it's a whole lot cheaper than grid energy because grid energy, you're paying over time, but you're paying over time forever. Yeah. That with solar energy, okay, it's, it's some investment now, but then if you look at the numbers, how much um, money you're saving that you would have been giving to your grid energy and how much money um, you're saving from maybe the stress and all of that. Um, like two, three years or four years, if you cover your money and then solar system somebody lasts from like 10 years, 15 years, the panels are like 20 years. So after all that time, with all that remaining time, using energy free of charge. So it's just a scary part. So to be to break that, you just show them the numbers. You take yeah. your time, take your time, do all the calculations. So for, for somebody to have the material it takes, um, the installation, it has a price, the maintenance. Uh, how, how will you evaluate the cost? Like, oh, if you can give an estimate. Oh yeah, so usually, usually when we have to do the system, um, when we have done the designing and all of that ourselves, we just charge you um, between 20 to 30% of the cost of all your materials. Yeah. So if all, all that you're using from your panels, your batteries, to so the little, little things, the cabling, blah, blah, and all of that, and then we just charge you 20 to 30 percent it really just depends on the on the customer yeah. uh, for customers whose systems cost a lot we can take it right down to like 20 percent cost of installation and all that so it's, it's actually just varies mm -hmm. so it's affordable for everybody yes it's, it's mainly to be affordable for everybody mm. does working on the solar powered electrical system require any special skills or well, everybody can do that Oh no, it really requires skills. <laughs> not every electrical engineer can do no, that. No, okay. no, 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 you, you, not everybody can do it. Yeah. Um, as an electrical engineer, normally you have a good basis yeah. to quickly learn yeah. the skills that is required to do solar energy. How long, for example, does it take for you to learn those skills? Honestly, for me, I, th I think it should be like one and a half year. Okay. One and a half year. 
uh, or even less than like one year if you're continuously practicing. Mm -hmm. But because with solar energy, you have like raw calculations, calculations that the softwares can't do it for you. So you really need to take your time to know how to do all of them. Take into consideration um, rainy days, take into consideration um, the efficiency of your equipment, take into consideration so, so many things. Um, so it's not really easy for many people. Um, it's, not, it's not obvious. So many people are like, okay, you need solar energy, you just put your panels and things like that, no. Um, the, even the angle of putting your panels is very important because there's some angles that will make you that you receive more energy in a year than other angles. So all those things are really, really important. So it's not just anybody, you need to really know. So tell us about the solar energy project that has made uh, the most impact on you so far. Okay, well, I remember uh, a solar energy project that I did. This is before Solar City. It was just me yeah. and me learning at the time because I actually took like a year or two to learn before starting my company. So I was actually working with this man. So we're moving along, working and learning. So it really gave me time. So there was this time we had to work on this project for one of the tallest buildings in Limbe and Southwest at the time. And um, the system was huge. It was supposed to carry. This is big. The company, that building had like, I think six floors or seven, I'm not too sure anymore, but it was really one of the tallest. And we had it into like 88 panels. Um, it was an 80 kilowatt um, system in general. And that's, uh, that's, that, that project took three months, three months. It was a very <laughs> long project. And um, there were a lot of things that I learned along the way. And even the, 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 the calculations that we did at the beginning, there had to be changes and things like that. So it was a really, really long project. But it was really impactful to me because my team of today is made up of the people I met there. So the longevity of which we used to work together really helped me to understand. So we took our time to really understand how to work together. And so today they are my team and I just couldn't have started with a better, better set of people. Okay. So let's finish with this little game. You're going to play with me. It consists of you giving me the yeah. use of the tools you use in the field of your work. Okay, so first of all, Homer Pro. Homer Pro. So Homer Pro is a software. So the software is mainly used to help you with your calculations. So we, it would help you do your calculations a bit easier, and then it will design your system for you. So it will tell you that, okay, with all these data you put in, it will design it for you, and even probably give you the cost, the, the estimated cost. Mm -hmm. So this Frank CFA um, usually comes with dollars, but you can convert it to Frank CFA at the end. So Omar Pro is really easier, especially when you have many systems to do at the same time. It's difficult to start doing all those raw calculations, especially when the people just, just want to send proposals, so many proposals. Um, it can help you do that quickly. Investors. 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 Yeah. In investors. Yeah. That's a tool. That's, That's a tool you... Invet in <laughs> inventors. Yeah. So inverters, inverters are like, um, it's, it's, it's like a whole electric, ele, um, electronic com component. Yeah. So it's made of many electronic components and then it's a whole system um, that converts um, direct current to alternating current. So like the kind of current that the panels and the batteries produce is not the kind of current we use um, in our homes. So a typical home uses um, alternating current and it's what a new energy of Cameroon produces for us. So if you want to give them energy from the panels or the batteries, you need to convert that kind of current into the one that we can use. So the inverter does it for you. Helioscope. Helioscope is a, it's a great, great software. So this one is actually mostly online. So you use it to actually design the systems from where you are. So that's the one of the reasons that we take like the GPS, the exact GPS location of the person. Because the satellite will be able to show us the person's roof from our laptops on the system. And then you can design the way the panels should be placed on the roof. And you'll also be able to tell you that at this particular angle, um, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to get a lot more energy from the panels than at another angle. And also be able to tell you the obstacles that you meet on the roof, things that you couldn't have seen from the ground and things. So Heliscope really help you to help you do that very well. And that you can also do your design and then leave it halfway. And another maybe engineer can also take it and continue and all that. So it does the other remaining calculation, but that's really the main great thing about it. Okay, and to finish with batteries. Oh, batteries is like yeah. storage system. Very common. <laughs> yeah, so batteries are like just storage systems. What they use to store energy. So, but at the moment, um, most of the batteries that people used in the days, in, 
ancient days were like um, gel batteries to store energy, like huge banks of energy. Um, because the small ones that we use in our, in like in our remote controls, are like good batteries, like lithium batteries, they're great, but the small, because they're expensive, so that you actually use them in small, small um, applications. But when you go like storing energy for a home and things like that, you go to gel batteries, like for a car, you go to gel batteries. Um, gel batteries is one type of batteries that we use, that we used to use, which now Solicity is trying to go away from. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get into lithium batteries, lithium batteries with bigger storage, even bigger um, in capacity than gel batteries. Because gel batteries, you can only use 50 to 60 percent of the energy that's inside. So for the same amount of energy, you might need to use like two or three. But with lithium batteries, no. For the same capacity, you can just use one. It's, it's a little bit more expensive, but you can use 90% of the energy that's inside. It saves a lot of energy, a lot of space, a lot of money and cabling and all of that. So, and the efficiency is a whole lot more. So gel batteries are like 90 to 92% efficient. Lithium batteries are like 96 to 98% efficient. And so that we really use that because with most of our clients, they have ACs in their homes. And so ACs, their startup current and startup power is actually huge. They use a lot of energy to start. And so gel batteries are not are not really apt to 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 take that to take that shock at the beginning. So lithium batteries does that. They really do that a whole lot better. So we're trying to get into that set of batteries. So yeah. Okay, innovation, innovation. Okay, thank you, Cynthia Acha, for accept, accepting our invitation. You came all the way from Limbet just to participate to this program, and it was a very big pleasure to have you here. I am very honored myself, really. Um, the welcome here was very warm, and it was great, and your hosting was amazing. So I couldn't have passed it, even if I wanted to. Thank you. Thank you.